Have you ever been reading a celebrity pastor's blog posts or listening to a famous Bible teacher and something jumps out to you and you're just like, how am I the only person seeing this thing? Why isn't anyone talking about it? Well, you're not alone. Welcome to Underdog Theology. This podcast is about looking at what's happening in evangelicalism. I'm talking tweets, I'm talking books, blogs, videos, all of it, and judging it according to scripture. Whether that's reacting to celebrity pastors, teasing about the latest ridiculous battle in the culture war, or just having a little bit of fun together, this show is for all the folks who feel like they're on the outside looking in, who feel like they don't have a voice, who feel like they're an underdog. Welcome to Underdog Theology. What's going on, everybody? How's your Monday going? I hope it's going super great. We're going to be talking about some stuff today. This is one of those shows, you know, where uh, it's coming from you guys. we got Winsome Pickett, who's in the chat right now, being like, don't, don't you mess this up. All right, don't you do it. Because he's the one who got me going on this thing. We're going to be talking about a podcast. I know. Another podcast talking about a podcast. A podcast about podcasts. It's the ultimate millennial step, right? Well, we're going to be doing it because, well, there's just, there's some stuff we need to talk about. All right. But I know some of you guys might be like, I don't care. You know, like it's just another podcast. Like this isn't. You know, something from TGC or Desiring God. Why would I care about it? It matters because this is the future, guys. The future is the Bible Bashed podcast, which I'm sure those guys, hi, by the way, because I, again, I know how this works. You make a video, those people will watch if... Yeah, I almost threw out some names <laughs> for some people. All right, let's let's do the ones that are known. Uh, if if Josh Bice is going to watch videos, if John MacArthur might have watched some videos, I'm pretty confident that the guys at Bible Bashed are going to be watching this. And so I want I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be fair with you guys, okay? But just stick with me because I've got some thoughts. And so don't get too excited when Dean's like, hey. You know, this is the future. The future is now, and the future is Bible Bash podcast. It's not good. <laughs> like, it's it's not a good future. We're kind of dealing with a little bit of a dystopian future, I guess, uh, as we get things going today. But I want to say hi to everybody who's hanging out in the chat. We've got we've got all the peoples. We've got we've got all all the every single one. I don't know how many people are watching because I changed things up. And for some reason, my stream deck just like won't connect and let me know how many people are watching. You know what? I'm going to open a little tab. I'm going to open a tab here. We're going to, we're going to do some stuff live. You got, Oh, you guys can see it. <laughs> we're not going to open a tab there. Forget it. All right. Uh, well, I'll just trust you guys every once in a while. Just let me know if there's like a lot of people watching. <laughs> you guys got my back, right? Um, all right. So we've got, uh, you know, we've got the normies, everyone who usually hangs out with us on a Monday. We've got Carol here. Uh, there was some talk about lunches from Heidi. Um, I haven't, I haven't had lunch. I get a little nervous for podcasts and I wait until after. <laughs> uh, Matthew Musgrave says the fruit of the spirits from that podcast title along, uh, see, uh, I'm guessing alone seem to be producing loathing, judgment, pride, pain, uh, some, some word glibness, galling and selfish contempt. Uh, we'll, we'll be dealing with some stuff, man. We'll be dealing with a lot of it. We've got, uh, Bronxkies is here we've got jer hanging out and says uh you know hit that like button so we don't have to hear dean ask you thirty eight thousand times it's still gonna happen guys this, this is all i want all i want i don't care how many views i get on a video i want a hundred likes on every single one of my streams that's what i want if you want to help out this show that's the way to help out this show a hundred likes that's it i'm not asking for a lot you know i'm I'm not asking for the Patreons. I'm not asking for, you know, some, I don't know, 
like uh, what else do podcasts ask for it's just patreon right like they're just always like support my patreon let me have the image on the screen the entire video um <laughs> which is something that this podcast does <laughs> But we'll talk about it. Um, we're not doing that. We just want 100 likes, y'all. That's all. I'm, I'm a simple man. Uh, Johnny Appleseed is here and says, playing the Baptist drinking game without the Baptist tonight, saying, I have a beer. Okay. Well, hey, you know what? It is uh, It is 1230 in the afternoon here. I don't know where it is, where you are, Johnny, <laughs> but it's a little early. <laughs> okay. Uh, and... John Adams and and Jarrett, you guys got to stop fighting in the chat, okay? I know, like people are talking about, like, oh, you're just you're just a tech podcast, or oh, you're tech channels. Calm down, guys. Let's get along. Let's let's be nice to each other. Um, we've got uh, who, who did I just go by? Tracy is here and says Monday is great. Just had a newborn son. What? <laughs> Congratulations, Trey. That's awesome. He's doing well. Glad to get to hang out live during my parental leave. That's fantastic. I'm so excited to hear that. I don't know why you're wasting time with this stream. You got you got the cuteness over there. I hope you're holding the cuteness. Welcome, welcome to the underdog family, little little Trey Jr. Um, welcome, welcome to the. <laughs> I'm just assuming. The Trey's going to be a fan of the podcast. Uh, we've got Whitney here. It says 51 people are watching. Okay, great. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, I'll, I'll ask at some point. <laughs> uh, Kira's here. It says made it and hit the like button too. That's how we know you're part of the fam. What's up, fam? Um, and uh, let's see. Bronski says congrats. See, that's beautiful. Lots of congrats for Trey. That's fantastic. All right. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to be talking about another podcast, like I said, a podcast about podcasts. But here's the deal. I want to be really fair to this podcast. Um, I don't want to be a basher. I know like that's their thing, you know, Bible bash podcast. Um, I'm not a basher. Like, here's the deal. I talk about public things. Once again, public responses to public articles, podcasts, videos, all that stuff. And when you put that out there on the internet, it is a fair game for anyone to talk about. All right. Uh, it's not gossip. It's not, you know, trying to cancel somebody like that's not what I'm about. I am about taking a look at what's going on in evangelicalism and giving my honest opinions about that. All right. Uh, so we're not here to like crush these people or to be like, they're the worst. All the other podcasts, I got to say, I put it in the thumbnail. It's, uh, it's, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fan of the podcast. <laughs> and I have a lot of thoughts about it, but I want to come from a perspective of not just like, cause I, I don't want to be the guy that's like punching like immediately. Like I'm not, uh, how to, how to put this? These, these people aren't like big shots. Okay. Like a lot of times we talk about being an underdog because we're talking about like the John MacArthur's and, and the John Piper's and all the, like the big organizations of TGC and desiring God and all the stuff that they push. And like, we're taking shots of the big dogs. And I feel like that's a lot easier than dealing with someone who's on your level. All right. Um, and like their, their podcast is a little bit smaller than this channel, but like, it's, it's that same kind of deal. And I don't like, you know, constant, like, I don't do that. I don't constantly talk about podcasts who are on my level. It just, you know, it doesn't seem like it's all that important for most people. Uh, but also it just kind of feels a little weird. So I want to be clear that I'm doing this because I actually think that there's purpose to it. And I'm not coming from an angle of everything that these guys have ever put out is like the worst or like that they're just, you know, horrible people. I don't know them. All right. So all I, I just want to be honest about all that kind of stuff. I, I don't want to just talk trash about people. That's not what I do on this channel. That being said, I have been asked by Winston Pickett, by some other people, too, asking me like, hey. You, you ever going to talk about these guys? Uh, they're constantly over here on Twitter making all kinds of ruckus. 
And uh, we'd appreciate you, you know, shining a light a little bit and, you know, giving your thoughts about what's going on over there. And I'm doing that not just because they asked, but also, like I said, I think that this is kind of where we're at right now. You know, a lot of times we talk about like the sources of things. Like, you know, we talk about Doug Wilson and his theology, or or we talk about John MacArthur and some of his counseling philosophies. Those would be like the sources of things that are going on. Now we're looking at the effects. And earlier when I joked, you know, the future is now and the future is Bible Bash podcast. Um, like I'm joking, but I'm also a little bit serious that I feel like we're just going to get more and more of this kind of stuff because we're having these people you know, normal congregants, um, you know, just average Christians, average pastors who hear all this stuff from the people like Doug Wilson, like John MacArthur, like John Piper. And as I've said so many times here on this channel, followers go further and they go further with their stuff. And it's not to say that those other guys don't, you know, go pretty extreme sometimes, but a lot of times the, the way that they're able to stay on like the big platforms with the extreme takes is because they know when to get extreme and when not to, and when to sound reasonable and when to let it loose, depending on their audience and who's recording and how far this thing is going to get as far as reach. And so these guys, these other guys, the the other podcasts that are out there who, you know, they, they're just being influenced by these guys. They don't have that. You know, they don't, they don't have that same kind of wisdom of knowing where that line is and when, when to stop. And again, it's not to say that those people always have it right, but a lot of these other guys, the guys who are, you know, I don't know, like I, I would say like the categories of like William Wolf, if you've seen his stuff on Twitter or, you know, some of, some of those guys who, you know, they, they went to some conferences with, with Doug Wilson or, or, um, you know, maybe they've even spoken to some, uh, like, you know, I don't know, some, like they always have the Q and a, I think, I think we're all Q and A'd out, right? Like the Q and a is a little dated at this point. How many ferns can we put on this stage? Shepherds, man, what, what it was, what was going on there? Um, <laughs> but like there's, they might be there, but they're not like the big shots. And so they're, they don't have like that wisdom of knowing when to stop, how far to go. And we're just getting more and more extreme takes because when you have extreme leaders, their followers are going to get more and more extreme. And today we're going to be looking at a podcast that I think is like the epitome of that, you know, of, of being so influenced by certain teachers uh, and then because, you know, we all have access to the internet, being able to put all those extreme takes, go further and push it out. And honestly, a lot of their stuff is super offensive and they're proud of it. So like there's, there's a part of me that I think it's a good point for us to be able to learn from today, but also like, I know they're going to be happy. <laughs> I know this kind of stuff, okay? I know these kind of people. I know that they're probably over the moon that we're going to be talking about it. And it just like fuels their fire uh, of being like, well, you know, we we got people. You know, we got people talking about us. Um, and it kind of fuels their fire of being like, we're the ones out here who are holding the line because they think the line is way further right than the line actually is. Um, so... We're going to deal with some stuff. We're going to start off, maybe, again, maybe you've never heard of these people, but I guarantee you there are going to be a hundred podcasts just like it that you're going to be dealing with in the future. Uh, they're not the only one. I don't know if they'll ever grow or, you know, expand into something that has a lot of reach, but I'm saying like there are so many pastors who are like looking at all like the think media stuff <laughs> and they're like, I can do this. You know, like I could turn on that camera, I could get that light and, you know, have my bookshelves behind me and we can, we can get this video out there. There are going to be more and more people like this. So I want us to be able to look at these things and kind of evaluate, you know, 
when are we talking about someone who just has a strong opinion? And when are we talking about, you know, the outrage bait, you know, like the, the stuff that they put out there to get people angry and uh, where's that line and how do we deal with that? So that's what we're talking about today. I hope, um, you know, that you guys stick with me and I think it'll be worthwhile. Um, <laughs> I know we're not, we're going to talk about like Doug Wilson. We're going to talk about uh, John MacArthur, but not in the same ways of responding to some of the stuff that they put out. So I know a different kind of show, um, but let's let's talk about some things because here's where things started for me. Not just, you know, Winston Pickett left a comment on Twitter being like, hey, you know, it'd be great, you know, if you would look into these guys. Uh, and again, you know, let me know. D hop into the comment section if there's stuff that you guys as underdogs are passionate about, um, different ministries, videos, specific podcasts, different things that you would like to discuss with the rest of us, uh, let me know because we might do a show about it. You know, like uh, it's not just me here. It's no longer the Dean Lentini channel. It's underdog theology. So all of us together. Um, so here's where things got me going, though. It wasn't just, OK, some people were, wanted you know us to talk about it. It's stuff like this, or right, there's going to be some offensive language, not to the point of like cussing or anything like that, but I mean, pretty offensive, at least to me. Um, so uh, this is what uh, Bible Bash is really about. So they, they go on to Twitter, because uh, if you are to find like their YouTube, you're going to see pretty small channel. Uh, but if you go on to Twitter, they have a much larger following. They're, guys, they're like, I've got like only like 300 of you guys following me. Now, you know, the, I also have my other Twitter account, my personal one where most of you guys found me, but like we're sitting at 300. These people are at 6,000. So they're, they're doing something that that's resonating with people, uh, on Twitter. And part of it is doing these polls. And I have a lot of thoughts <laughs> about these polls. Uh, but you can see it's polls like this. We're going to uh, just, look, I don't know why you feel the need to use the R word at this point. Um, it's offensive. It is offensive. It's needlessly offensive. There are so many ways that you can talk about people who have uh, some kind of mental deficiency or divergence. And there, there are plenty of ways that you could talk about it. These people aren't dumb, by the way. We'll talk about you know where they're at, where they're from. But this is what they do. They go on to Twitter and they have these polls and they say something in the most, well, maybe not the most, but an offensive way. They put it in an offensive way that they know will get people to interact. And so they, they put it out there and they ask questions that no one is asking. Nobody. You know, I know that they're probably would say, no, there's tons of, there's so many people, so many people are asking these difficult questions and they're not getting the answers from, you know, TGC and, um, you know, all those, all those blogs, G3 isn't writing an article about this. And so we're here to fill in the gap here. I'm sure that's how they would convince themselves that it's appropriate for them to do that. Um, but no one's asking this stuff. Do all severely people go to heaven when they die? I want you to take a look at the numbers. All right, the numbers on here, this is where I go like, what? Now, again, you know, you can see right there, 350 votes, 324 votes. But even that, it's like, what? why are we having these kind of numbers? Uh, does God give these people a free pass to disobey him? Should we? Now, again, they're going to be like, hey, uh, I'm just asking the question. You know, I'm just asking the question. Uh, I'm not saying uh, a certain perspective, but when no one is asking that question, the fact that you are, I think says something about you. I think it says something about what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and also the way that you word things, getting a free pass to disobey him. Mentally handicapped people, they, they want to use a different word for it, but mentally handicapped people, they're saying, you, they get a free pass to disobey God. And they're putting it in that way because you'll see as we go through some of their stuff, uh, they, uh, they, they have very dangerous thinking when it comes to counseling of any sort. 
Um, but specifically when it comes into uh, different mental illnesses, psychology, um, we'll take a look at a couple different videos, but this is the kind of stuff that they do. They put out these polls and some of them are like that. Uh, you know, obviously I have a son who's autistic, so bias right there. Um, but it also my bias is actually experience, which I wonder about these guys. Um, but, uh, you know, do any commands of scripture apply to autistic kids? If so, which ones? <sighs> like who's asking this question? Um, but also 94% say yes, but they're putting it in that way. Does the command to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep apply to autistic kids? <sighs> All right, this, this is why <laughs> we're talking about this stuff. It's because they they look at uh, someone who would be on the autism spectrum and say, fit in. Fit in. You have to obey. If I have to obey these biblical commands, then you have to obey those biblical commands. It applies to everyone. But what you're doing is you're putting yourself into the, the, the feet of God, essentially, that you're saying, what obedience looks like is what I say it is. God is like so much bigger, better. Like he understands everything. Do you think that he might understand these people a little bit better than you? And what does obedience look like to him? Isn't that what should matter? But of course, you know, it's all about your actions. And you'll see this constantly throughout. And this is one of those things that's just another uh, hallmark of fundamentalism. And it doesn't always look the same. They're not always sitting in the pews. They're not talking about every wind of doctrine like we talked about in Fundyville last week. Uh, it's not always like that. It might look a little different. It might sound a little bit different, but it's always a focus on the behavior. Uh, uh, and I would say, you know, like that it's unbalanced between the heart and the actions. You know, they're not concerned about what this autistic kid is actually feeling because not every autistic kid expresses themselves in the same way. That's why it's called a spectrum. Their emotions might not, what they can understand about emotions might be different. Also, how they express their emotions might be different. I Again, like I have an autistic son and he uh, expresses his emotions much differently than I do, much differently than his brothers do. And it doesn't always look like a smile on his face when he's happy. It might be clapping. It might be a lot of movements back and forth, but it doesn't look the same. So again, when you're saying rejoice with those who rejoice, you're saying you have to rejoice like I do. And if it isn't, then it's disobedience, right? Or weep with those who weep. There are plenty of autistic people out there who just don't cry. That's also a thing. How you express emotions is very different. But again, it's I am that like standard bearer of what it looks like for obedience. Your behavior needs to match up with what I think that behavior should be. And so... If you don't cry the same way I do, you're not weeping with those who weep. But again, they would hide behind. And I think it's a cowardly thing. All right. Uh, the idea of I'm just asking a question. Well, again, no one else is asking that question to the way that you ask the question, I think shows about your heart. But it's it's that just say what you want to say. That's always my thing. I when people like leave comments and be like, it seems that you think this just say you think this like don't be like oh it seems you know if you're gonna be bold about something be bold about it don't just hide behind it i'm just asking questions no one else is asking that so i think we understand what you're trying to do here's another poll child protective services is fill in the blank and uh 48 says unbiblical full stop which is scary as heck to me, uh, makes me very concerned about, you know, who the people 
are voting. I mean, 48%, we're talking about 200 of these votes here uh, that they're saying Child Protective Services is unbiblical. What? You mean like the government stepping in and saying like, hey, uh, how you treat your children matters? And maybe we should have laws about that and maybe some kind of way of being able not just, you know, they always jump to like, they're coming for your kids. They're going to take them. Well, first off, if they're at the point where they're thinking about taking away your kids, something is wrong. But also uh, a lot of it is about information and, and accountability. And sometimes that's because the church isn't doing a good job of being accountable and informing parents. Uh, but unbiblical, full stop. But who's also asking this question? Who's wording this stuff this way? Well, people who have a point. They, they, they have a point to make of they don't believe in child protective services. Well, that tells me you don't care about the well-being of children. All right, now I'm not saying there's anything mischievous going on. But if you care about the well-being of children, well, I don't know if you'd be asking that question in that way of putting down these things. But again... They're just asking questions. And that's that's their whole thing. That's their whole thing. So then again, they have a podcast. Let's take a look uh, of things that these kinds uh, of podcasts will be doing. And again, we'll talk about the influence in just a little bit. But here's some of the stuff that they put out. All right. So let's just let's just take a look here. Like the issue is that intelligent people learn okay <laughs> it's just yeah. like it just is the way it is okay so part of this is just you have to come face to face with the reality that people are different and there are intelligent people and there are dumb people like that's just the way the world works okay so that was about uh learning styles <laughs> like that you might be more of a hands-on learner or you, like and i think specifically you know, the connection between autism and learning styles. I think there's something definitely there. All right. That's what these people are getting at. And they're trying to say, well, there's just, you know, if you can't learn, you can't learn. You're just dumb. You, you, it doesn't matter. If, you, if you're smart, you'll learn. That's ridiculous. None of this, like, this isn't backed up by any studies. It's just, once again, I'm the standard bearer. And what I say looks like what, how I evaluate intelligence, that that's, that's what makes it true. And it's just, well, if you're smart, you're just going to learn. We need to stop this, this foolishness of learning styles. Well, that goes against every study, but you know, whatever it's, it's that kind of stuff. All right. Let's, let's see. Just There's plenty more. of things you wouldn't have them doing the not like totally unrelated to marriage just general you know um you know like like it, i've never i've never seen a mentally retarded doctor and that was part of the question of should the they would use a different word but mentally handicapped people be allowed to get married because again an important question that so many people are really wondering about but they're just asking the question and just saying, hey, I've never seen, you know, what they would use uh, again. Super offensive word that shouldn't be used. It just shouldn't. All right. Uh, we're in 2024. Like you should not be using this kind of language to describe. And again, this is this is the language of bullies. And we're Christians. Like, even if you were like, I should be allowed to use words that some might find offensive and not be canceled because of it. if even if you have like that kind of mindset, why you would choose to use that kind of language in a way when you're trying to persuade people, I think just shows everything about you. <laughs> like it just it reveals so much about how much you actually care about certain people. All right. I'm. Uh, this, this kind of stuff just ticks me off. And <laughs> I think I'm beginning to show that a little bit. <coughs> Still getting over my cough. All right, let's let's uh, let's go to some more. <coughs> you can't see it because of the logo there. Does God expect men to find their huge wives attractive? Again, just asking the question. 
Here we go. Was that a guy was and still is? I mean, guys expected to be attracted to his his wife, so he's expected to modify himself, like figure out what's attractive to her, and be that kind of person, right? And then on the other end, like it was the guy, like the the guy's job was to overcome the lady's insecurity by basically telling her like, I love you no matter who, what, right? Like I right. love you no matter what. And it was his job just to. Un- That's being looked at as a negative. Negative. <laughs> like the, the man was supposed to love his wife and like, no matter what. That's a bad thing. How is that unbiblical in any way? <laughs> like Jesus loves the church. Men are supposed to love their wives. Like what? It's not like Jesus is looking at the church and be like, I don't love you no more, girl. <laughs> like what? Unconditionally kind of affirm the woman. And those are the standards growing up. But then part, part of what's happened though, is that women stop policing each other. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. You so, can't fat shame anymore. You can't fat shame anymore. So women have like, not only did they stop policing each other, they stopped trying. Okay. <laughs> so like, so <laughs> everyone's getting fatter. The Like there's a ceasefire called on fat shaming. Women are not allowed to like police each other now. And so then you, then what you have is you have like, it's not just like the woman is five to 10 pounds overweight feeling like disgusted with herself because she's such a fatty or something like that what's happened now is like the woman is like 80 pounds overweight (laughs) you know uh 100 pounds overweight or whatever and then everyone is just unconditionally praising her you go girl you're beautiful you you're definitely not gonna die 20 years early (laughs) from cardiac arrest (laughs) so yeah so what like this is this is the fruit guys All right. I know that maybe there are some people who might be out there. I don't know why you're watching this show at this point, but there might be people watching who are like, I I don't know. I could, I could take the good with the bad with Doug Wilson. I could take the good with the bad with John MacArthur. This is the fruit of that. All right. This is the influence of people like that. And again, we'll get into why I say that here in just a minute, but these guys are influenced by those teachers and they're then taking that stuff and applying it to practical ministry. It's not hypothetical for these guys. All right, the guy with the beard uh, is a pastor. Um, this guy this guy is a pastor. Uh, this, this other gentleman on the podcast, he is a worship leader who is training to be a pastor. All right, like these, these people are doing ministry. And they're being like this way, they're talking about this stuff, which again... I don't know who, who, I don't care who you are, what you, what you do online and what kind of stuff you're into. You will always be more tame online than you will when you're hanging out with your friends or you're doing something that isn't going to be shared online. Right? So if this is the stuff that these kinds of people are willing to say online, I can guarantee you that they will be stronger. They will be more forceful and because of the kind of stuff that they're saying here, I, I would say like dangerous behind those closed doors when they're not online. And again, it's not just this podcast. Okay. This is just an example. There are like, there's this podcast. There's a thousand podcasts that you could probably go and find right now. And they're doing the exact same stuff because they're copying Doug Wilson, because they're copying John MacArthur, because they're copying John Piper. And again, they're not those people. And they don't know how to stop themselves. And so they just keep on going and saying stuff. Now, maybe those people would agree with some of these stances that these guys take um, maybe behind closed doors. Probably wouldn't say it online. Uh, But that's what they're doing. And again, they're just asking the question, does God expect men to find their huge wives attractive? It's they're just asking the question. But again, here's something, you know, these kind of guys, this, these are the people that will leave the comments about me and, and my appearance, uh, you know, and be like that, that, you know, that contradicts everything that you say. So uh, what do I know, I guess. But here's where things get really dangerous because that kind of stuff is just like annoying, right? Like that, that stuff is just like, what are, you, what are you doing here? What are you trying to accomplish 
here. This is where it gets dangerous when it starts to be like that kind of philosophy of dealing with things in such a harsh way, unloving, ungracious. And again, I'm not saying that those people just are always unloving and ungracious in their personal lives. I'm just saying what they put out there, that when you have that kind of philosophy, it does have an effect on other areas. And here's, here's one that I find extremely dangerous. Indecisiveness nearly every day, you know, either made by you or others, and then reoccurring thoughts of death or suicide. So basically you need like five of, or eight of, uh, f- uh, you need five of these uh, symptoms for a two week period, you know, at least every day. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it has to be a change from how you normally function. So that's kind of a clinical diagnosis. That, diagnosis that, and one of the things you'll notice about that is that nothing medical is happening at all in that kind of diagnosis. You're just asking people questions about their thoughts and behavior, right? Yeah, it, it kind of sounds like the, you know, when you're when you're talking to kids, they get hurt, and you ask them how bad it hurts on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> right, 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 very, right. Very subjective. Right. Now, now, what that tells you, though, so you're asking me what my view of depression is. Well, you, you kind of have to deal with like psychology's view. So psychology's view, I mean, this is described as a mental illness, right? Mm-hmm. So and the way it's determined is by talking to people about, you know, uh, uh, their subjective impressions of their thoughts and feelings as far as that goes. And then some of them have some sort of check on it. You know, it has to be observable by other others. But I mean, like it's like there's nothing scientific that just happened there, right? Right. But then the end result of that is that this is considered basically a mental disorder, or and, and in the minds of most people, it's basically considered a, a uh, you know quasi medical illness, right? Mm-hmm. So I, when someone says they have depression, essentially what they're saying is that it's almost like as if they're saying that they suffer from or they're suffering from depression. I mean, it sounds very much like the same it's the same kind of medical language as someone would say, I'm suffering from cancer or something along those right. lines. Right. And, and so so basically you have this uh, quasi medical category that feels like it as if it's representing some kind of organic problem in a certain way. That basically has to do with guilt, uh, despair, and hopelessness. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, but but then you know what? Uh, the way I would describe it, you know, what do I? Here's what? Where I, what it gets I, I'm going to look at these same things and try to give a biblical definition of this, or give some sort of um, uh, put that language into biblical terms. All right. Okay. As far as that goes. And so I would describe depression as a de- de- debilitating mood, feeling, or attitude of hopelessness, which becomes a person's reason for not handling the most important issues of life. Does that make sense? Okay. So notice how that kind of definition puts re- personal responsibility on the person itself. So it's a debilitating mood, feeling, attitude of hopelessness which becomes the person's reason for not handling the most important issues of life. So when a person is, so I'm describing uh, clinical depression in that way as a decision to give in to this despair or hopelessness um, uh, or give in to these debilitating moods to the point where you just refuse to handle life anymore. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that would be, that would be. (sighs) This this is where things get dangerous, not just of like that's offensive or that's annoying or oh, that like kind of like that rage bait kind of stuff. It's when you start realizing that these people who have these kinds of podcasts, again, not just this one, but they have these kinds of podcasts that they're doing the ministry. They're they're in charge of stuff like they're they're dealing with people. And they're giving this kind of advice and thinking about something as like just awful as depression and saying, well, just get over it. You're using it as an excuse to not deal with life. In other words, grit and grind, get up, pull yourself up, you know, by the bootstraps and you get going. Just just get over it. Like put a put a Bible shaped bandaid on this thing. And just move on. And if you don't, you're just wallowing in your depression. If you still have those thoughts of self-harm, you're it's on you. You just need to get over it. 
stop having those thoughts, get over it. And so these people just don't share, right? Like that's, that's how that stuff works because it doesn't actually work. When you just tell people to just get over their hardships uh, or you're not giving, you're not actually listening to, which was one of the most healing things when someone is depressed is to have someone really listening and, and being like just a, a caring individual in that moment, like that matters a whole ton. And so when you just say, get over it, grit and grind, like essentially you're just telling that person to shut up about their problems. Don't talk to me anymore about them. So that next time when they're having those thoughts, it's not like they're going to go away. It's, it's not like it's just all of a sudden, oh, you know what? Yeah, I do just need to try harder. You know, and if I just try harder in that moment, I'm not going to have any of those thoughts anymore. All right. Maybe, maybe sometimes that does work. All right. But a lot of times it doesn't. And those people, when they then have the next thought, they're not going to come to you. Right. Like they're not going to come to you. They might not have anybody to go to. And that's when the most awful stuff in the world can happen is when someone doesn't feel like they have anyone that they can talk to you about these things. And especially when the context uh, of a local church, they should be able to f- have plenty of people to be able to have these conversations with who will listen and show love, show the love of Christ to them. Not just be like, you know what? You just need to try harder. This is the kind of stuff that just makes my blood boil. It's just, just get over it. Just do more. This is legalism. This is what legalism leads to. When you're so focused on behavior that you just go, well, just stop. Just stop doing that stuff. You know, there's an old video that went around for a while and everyone thought it was the funniest thing in the world of, um, you know, a pastor doing counseling. And it was just, they there was like this rotating door of people coming into his uh, office and him jokingly, like it's played for laughs or just being, stop it. And they would go through their story and be like, Hey, you know, I'm dealing this, this, and this. And you'd just be like, stop it. And then the, you, this person would leave. And it's just like, this is what counseling is like. It's not funny. There's so many people that actually get that. And I'm assuming that these people would be like this. If they're willing to say this kind of stuff publicly on a podcast, I would imagine that they would be even more extreme when they're talking about these things and actually doing the ministry. And it's honestly kind of shocking. All right. Um, because when I, when I saw this stuff, I started watching this stuff, started looking at the polls and I just showed a few guys, there's, they do a lot of polls. And, uh, if you're interacting with those polls, I think you need to just give up on them. All right. Uh, that's kind of insane. Some of the questions that they're asking. Um, but I was like, I was assuming these were, you know, the guys who never went to seminary, the guys who, you know, just, um, they, they watched some videos online and we'll talk about some of that here in a minute. Uh, but I was expecting that kind of stuff. Well, no, no, these guys, they, they, they know some stuff. All right. Uh, let's go down just a little bit. Uh, this is like I said, like the pastor of these two, uh, he graduated from the master's university with a BA and Bible and the Southern Baptist theological seminary with an MDiv with biblical counseling emphasis. He is a certified addiction counselor with the addiction connection and elder of administration and biblical counseling at Providence church. How? <laughs> like that's, that's my question. Like just an honest question when I hear this kind of stuff and then be like, all right, you went to masters and you went to Southern and like you have, how can you end this way? Well, it's because of the influence of some of these guys and not just, you know, the Doug Wilsons, but also if you do a little bit of research here on this addiction connection, you find pretty quick that we're talking about the Association of Certified Biblical Counselors, ACBC. We're talking about the John Streets. We're talking about the people over in the John MacArthur world, uh, that kind of biblical counseling. That's what these people are into. And uh, let's just take a look here at another one of their influences. Um, yeah, okay, it's gonna work. Um, let's just let's just take a look here. Crazy because we do an episode on it. It's like mm-hmm. we're not the crazy ones. Like we're the only insane ones out here. And like the fact that the, the fact that there's no 
big name evangelicals that are talking about the stuff we're talking about on a re- regular basis is just an indictment on where we're at because there's just such confusion about these things at, at, at so many levels. I mean, like if I, if I knew that there was other people out there who were willing to address these topics, I'd shut up and get off the internet and let them, you know, so I don't, I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any interest in doing it myself. It's just a matter of, I have people ask me these questions all the time. And most of these questions are questions people are sending to me and I have no resources to send them. So I just, you know, we do a podcast on it. That's the way it works. I'd be very curious to know whether that's truthful or not. And if those questions are honestly being asked to these people, I think that there's probably, you know, who are you watching? What are, what are you listening to? What are you reading that you're having these kinds of questions pop up? Cause I guarantee you it's not the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I remember, uh, well, I mean, this was years ago now, but I remember um, early on after having met you, you had you had pointed me to a debate between or no, no, it wasn't a debate. It was a um, it was like a, a lecture that the, the sexual Doug by design w- stuff that yeah, the sexual by design stuff by Doug Wilson, where he's going shocker, right? <laughs> Like, oh, none of us could have predicted. <laughs> like, I know I already said it a couple times, but you knew. As soon as you start listening to these people looking at these tweets, you know that that's always going to be a thing behind it. That they're just being influenced by the John MacArthur's, by the Doug Wilson's, by the James White's, by the Jeff Durbin's. By the people who have these platforms, who are out here on the internet, who are putting out all the harsh takes, who are constantly doing that. Yeah, and they're getting lots of views. And it's these kinds of people who watch that stuff, get influenced by it, and then they go out and do more. Like that, that's what it is on a college campus. And I think, I think you showed me, they made a trailer for it. It was like, it was, the whole lecture is two videos and I think the entire thing is like three or four hours long when you count both videos time put together, but then they made a trailer for it where they're just showing essentially it's just the response. I mean, I don't even know if Doug, Doug Wilson probably has like a few taglines in there from the lecture and the trailer, but the majority of the trailer is just people's response to the lecture. Uh, The people, the people in the audience who, um, you know, who are just totally losing their minds over what's going on right now. And I watched so I watched that and um, I remember I remember thinking to myself, I watched through this entire thing and I'm just like I was blown away by the fact that Doug could say something that was so normal so obviously biblical and then he could get the response that he was getting and number one i was blown away by the fact that he could even you know maintain his maintain um you know his train of thought that doug wilson could even maintain his train of thought through this entire lecture but then the response that he was getting from people and i i think for me i everything that he said i agreed with before i ever watched the before we I know, ever watched the lecture know, from him, everything he said, I was in 100% agreement with him on. But the thing that the, the, the lecture did for me was it showed me a different side of Christianity where people were standing up and saying the things that were normal, but were not allowed to be said in our current society. And they weren't apologizing for it and they weren't, you know, dancing around. I mean, there, he was being direct and he was saying, he was saying what, what needed to be said and then letting people make fools of themselves the entire time. And so I watched that and I watched, I think I watched another, uh, an actual debate uh, with Jeff Durbin and James White. And I I can't remember who the. Yeah, we know, we know that you watched Doug Wilson's videos. We know that it spoke to you about oh why you know why are we giving into the culture by not being able to talk about these things in such a direct way is it direct or is it just being a jerk like it, there's a difference saying that like something like about gender like what the bible talks about gender that it is true all right you could you could say that 
but then calling people certain names or, you know, talking about people like Doug Wilson does, you know, and calling him cuss words and stuff like that. Like there's a difference. And of course, people are going to be outraged when you talk about that stuff in that way. And, you know, these guys will point out and be like, you know, like, I think I even remember these guys in a different clip talking about, um, you know, Jesus was was murdered because he made people angry. So, of course, we're going to make people angry. But there's a difference between pe- making people angry because of what a, the Bible says and because of the way that you say what the Bible says. Like, there's... Am, am I the only sane one? <laughs> like, there's a difference between those two things. Like, the way that you speak matters. That's why the Bible talks so often about it. That your speech be always seasoned with grace. But we can throw that out because of what the Bible says about gender. So we want to uphold and show the culture one aspect of Scripture, but then we're totally unwilling to actually display another aspect of scripture. Like you want to pick and choose these people want to talk about like different theological subjects that you pick and choose. Well, you're picking and choosing between the fruit of the spirit and the truth of scripture. You can do both. Like you, that that is a thing that is an option that you can choose and doing, you know, what you think scripture like these, these people, like the way that they talk about certain aspects and like they act like no one else is saying it. Yes, they are. All right. Have you ever been to an independent fundamental Baptist church? Like these people are holding out those same truths and they're saying it all the time. Now, some of them obviously go too far and we have fun talking about it in Fundyville. But a lot of them can stick within the lines and say like, hey, you know, there's a way to talk about these things. And so they're saying it. No one's coming around and being like, oh, you know, they're persecuting or people are losing their minds because of the way they say it. (sighs) These people, and like they, they went on in this podcast to talk about how they're persecuted. Like the, and like that, that guy who was talking about watching the Doug Wilson thing, he was talking about like, that's real persecution. (laughs) What? Oh my goodness. But that's where we're at. That's where we're at with podcasts like this. Again, This isn't just about bashing the Bible bash podcast, but it's the line of thinking. It's, it's the influence that some of these teachers have where they influence these young people. And then these young people eventually grow up and they get to be in charge of certain organizations, institutions, local churches. And then they start going further with that stuff. And it's about time that some of us, we start to point these things out and say like, save for what it is guys. You're just a Doug Wilson clone, but you, you don't have the wisdom that Doug Wilson has not saying that he, there's a lot of wisdom. Okay. I'm just saying, all right. I'm, I just want to be really clear about my stance there. I'm not saying like, there's a ton, but that's, it's what you're doing. So when you, when you go out and you have these questions that you put on these Twitter polls, I mean, you might as well have it coming from Doug Wilson's account. You might as well have it from, you know, some of these counseling guys over at um, Grace Church, you know, they're doing the exact same stuff. And so when you go online, you're going to see this more often. Like that's, that's my prediction. Like I'm not a prophet. I'm not charismatic either, but it's going to happen more and more where you're going to go online and you're going to see these guys and they're going to have podcasts and they're going to gain followings because again, Like there's just something to that where the internet just, if you've got an extreme take, you're going to be popular. You just are like, you'll, you'll get fanatics because you have an extreme take. So you'll get the extremists to go with you. And, uh, we're just going to run into this more and more. I hope that it's not just this one podcast. I would love for this podcast to take a little break and, uh, Maybe rethink how you put out some content. But I know stuff like this for those people are going to be like, oh, we're just getting more. You know, we're getting, oh, we're making some real movement now. We're getting people talking about us. It's not great. It's not always a good thing. There is such a thing as bad press. Not every press is good press. Just ask Neil Partridge. Okay. Uh, 
I had to throw that last one in. 88 people. Finally, my stream deck let me know how many people are watching. Uh, I don't know how many likes are there, but I'm guessing it's not many. Uh, so uh, maybe go over there and hit the like button, Jer. I had to do it. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's head over to the penalty box. Want to see a penalty? I'll show you a real penalty. Get on my face, man. All right. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a shorter show because I got kids and they're on spring break and they already tried to get in here and, uh, you know, I had to shoo them away. I don't know if you saw that movement. I'm so discreet. I'm so discreet when I'm not talking directly about it on the podcast. Okay. Uh, let's, let's deal with some stuff. Uh, it's two minutes. Okay. All right. So this is on, uh, Mark Driscoll has not changed. Which is always, I guess, it's just a staple. It's just a staple of the penalty box, I guess. But JMA, who I'm guessing is not John MacArthur, uh, it's interesting when real men, why he capitalized men? That's, that's always, like, I'm not one of those people that's, like, all about spelling. But I always, like, the capitalization stuff always gets me. I was just like, why do you feel compelled to hit the shift key on that one? Real men are successful and preach the word of God. There are others trying to call out negative attributes rather than praying. Grow up. Um, a couple thoughts. One, aren't you kind of doing the same thing? It's always the weird thing for me. It's like these people who come on and they're like, you need to stop being so critical. It's like aren't you doing that? <laughs> like, are you being critical right now? But why didn't you, did you pray for me? Okay. Um, but also <sighs> real men, can we please stop it with this branding stuff? Like, I think that's probably why, like you probably forgot to like, and we all know this is a dude, right? Like Jay, this is not Janice, <laughs> <All right? laughs> but like we all know he, f he forgot to capitalize R and real men because that's part of Driscoll's brand is real. And, uh, you know, let's be real running away from church discipline. I don't think is a real man. Um, uh, but you know, here I am just calling out negative attributes rather than praying. I need to grow up. I'm make me, <laughs> like this. am I childish? I don't know. But Make me. <laughs> All right, next up. Five guys each for fighting. For fighting. All right. Uh, so this is Celebrity Pastors Valentine's Day cards, which is a video I made just to have a little bit of fun. It, I thought it was funny. Don't know if anyone else did, but um, <coughs> so J Pi, J Pi, oh eight says, admittedly off topic here. Great way to start. Uh, but I just want to hop on to the comments of your latest video. It's definitely not my latest video. Uh, to remind you that you're pretty off base with the Francis Chan hit piece. Your ministry will never hold a candle to the work he has done. No, it won't. It won't hold a candle. Here's the deal. If I make a video where I'm saying that this teacher is dangerous with his theology... Do you think I want that ministry? <laughs> like, do you think I'm like, oh man, you know, you're right. I'll never, I'll never have that kind of a ministry where I go heretical. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's the dig you, you think it is. But also what I'm doing here is not a ministry. This is a hobby. This is me just giving my thoughts to people who seem to be like-minded and, um, you know, maybe some people who aren't, maybe they listen and they go like, Hey, he's got some points here. I don't like, I don't like the skulls, but you know, he's got a, he's got a couple points. Uh, and it's not a Francis Chan hit piece. Just because I say someone is wrong about something doesn't make it a hit piece. All right. What makes something a hit piece is when something is just untrue and you just share it so that like you just get views on something or you get, you know, people subscribing to something saying that he is fine with Catholics. And here's the reason why a Protestant would be not okay with that. That's not a hit piece. That's theology. Like, so. All right. Bye. <laughs> Next up. 
Four minute double minor penalty for high sticking. High sticking. All right. Uh, Mark Driscoll has not changed. Oh my goodness, sir. it's just always going to be here. It's always going to be here. Uh, we got uh, what is this? What is that? Shane Shane Arnold. I didn't. Need, I didn't need my glasses. That was comedic. It wasn't that funny. Uh, waste of time, maybe. Um, all right. Uh, Shane Arnold, eighty-eight fifty-six says, "Sorry, bro. I forgive you." Uh, but everyone has gotten the misconception that Christians are meek, humbled. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> it's such a bad misconception. Christians being meek and humble. Uh, God said, David, King David. Just got to put that in there. Just in, If you're thinking about the Bible and you're thinking about David's, just to be clear, it's King David. Uh, he had a heart like God. Study up. On what King David did to people. You know about Bathsheba's husband? All right, so this is this is them <laughs> trying to be like, it's okay. Anything that Mark Driscoll did was okay because David messed up. And we all know that when God said that he's a man after God's own heart, all right, that that means that he was giving a blanket approval to everything that David ever did. And that David never did any wrong. And uh, that it's it's all fine because at the end of the day, he's a man after God's own heart, and that's that's Mark, that's Mark Driscoll, guys, he's a man after God's own heart. He's like an he's like a present day King David, and we all just need to stop asking for like the biblical qualifications to be met. It's ridiculous. No, just set those aside. We don't need those because the videos he does, the reactions he does, that's more important, obviously. Um, the, the amount of reach that he gets is far more important. So let's just set, you know, first Timothy aside. We don't need that. Let's stick with the old Testament and just, you know, what did Elijah do on Mount Carmel? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Okay. That's actually one that Mark Driscoll used for himself (laughs) and what he would do if he was, Back then, okay. Um, here, uh, qualifications matter. If if the Old Testament matters, so does the New Testament. And uh, if you want to be like King David, and all of that is true, then you got to go with the New Testament. And say that's true too. And qualifications are still there for a local church pastor. If you don't meet those qualifications, you should not be an elder. I don't care what your name is. I don't care how much reach you have, how many followers you have on Twitter and Instagram, how many views you get on a YouTube video. Uh, if you're going to act like you are qualified, but you're not qualified and you ran away from church discipline, you refuse to apologize for it. Um, I don't think you should be in ministry. All right. Um, that's it. That's, that's, that's it today. We got, uh, went away. Why does it do that? I don't know. I don't know how many people are hanging out with us. Oh, let's see. Let's get the chat back up. Um, let's see, we got, we got, let's, let's go up a little bit. Um, Matthew Musgrave says, I am a C.S. Lewis clone. That's cool. (laughs) It's it's a pretty good clone. Uh, Elise says autistic people are absolutely still gifted. It doesn't take away from the label at all. So many autistic people are wise and intelligent and thoughtful. Absolutely. Um, you know, they're people and people are awesome. They could do some amazing things. And uh, just because someone is autistic doesn't mean that they're more gifted or less gifted. They're just people. And uh, they just express themselves in different ways or react to situations a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Um, <laughs> tax collector. But then again, Sith deal an absolute. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. You came here. Okay, we're not going to go through the whole Mustafar thing. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, Johnny Appleseed. Oh boy, the Driscoll boys are at it again every week, almost every day. Uh, I probably go through like my the. There's some comments that just get thrown into a folder to delete. Every once in a while, I'll read them. I probably get uh, once a day like some crazy offensive uh, message on, on that video, uh, or the, the Doug Wilson one too. I just got tired of showing the Doug Wilson's ones. Uh, Tim LaBurge, how dare you? What is, what is this, Tim? 
Tim, are you serious right now? MXPX is mid? I can't get it. It's behind there. Um, how dare you, sir? I, I thought we were like-minded. Um, apparently not. Uh, let's see. Is this an April Fool's Day comment? Maybe this is an April Fool's Day. I guess in a way it's kind of an April Fool's Day podcast. Uh, he's. I said what I said. All right. Um, that's it. That's it. That's the show today. 81 people watching still. I don't know why. Um, hit the like button on your way out. We'll be hanging out probably later this week. Got stuff going on. We're going to Saskatoon on Wednesday. If you're in Saskatoon on Wednesday, let me know. Um, no one, no one's going to be there. <laughs> Who wants to go to Saskatoon? Uh, but we, we got some busyness going on, so we'll see. I'll try to get in another stream this week. I'm looking at it. I'm still thinking about, you know, expansion and what that could look like for, for the channel. Um, and again, you know, today we talked about, um, you know, people that you guys wanted to talk about. This was for you guys. Uh, so if you have other thoughts about something else you want us to talk about, maybe even just a topic, let me know down in the comment section. Don't throw it in the chat because the chat will go away. Um, but go down into the comment section, leave a comment saying, Hey, you know, been watching for a while. Uh, I would love for you to cover this or give me your thoughts on this teacher, that podcast, this specific, you know, um, this idea, anything, you know, I want, I want to make the content that you guys want. Uh, as far as, you know, you might not like what I have to say, <laughs> but, uh, I do want to deal with the things that you guys want me to deal with, you know, and, uh, be able to give you in some way, some of you guys say it's helpful. So, uh, let's give you some, some helpful thoughts about some of this stuff. All right. Uh, that's the end of the show. Maybe next week I'll make an outro. Um, probably not. I'm waiting for OBS to catch up. 